is Hubwood. Hey everyone, this is Hubwood and today I'm attending the Intel Core Ultra 2 Lunar Lake series launch by Intel in Berlin. So this is kind of a quick and dirty video with not a lot of time for preparing myself. And these chips are somewhat impressive in terms of efficiency as in performance per watt. They manage to significantly lower the power draw by up to 50% depending on the workload. And part of that is due to disabling hyperthreading slash SMT completely. While at the same time performing a bit better than the old Core Ultra series, both in synthetic benchmarks and real work and gaming use cases. The maximum TDP can in this case be chosen between 8 and 37 watt by the laptop manufacturer, allowing them to build super thin ultrabooks that are powerful enough, uh, even outperforming AMD's Ryzen AI 9 HX series and the newest Qualcomm chips. In theory, that of course leads to better battery runtimes as well, but for that I'll have to get hands on a real unit in the future myself. But that also means, in theory, it should be very suitable for gaming handhelds if these benchmark results here are actually true. I'm really looking forward to test some of these myself, especially on lower TDPs. And speaking of gaming handhelds, MSI is here as well, presenting their prototype of the upcoming MSI Claw 2, which will be released early next year with an 8-inch screen and a 80 watt hour battery sporting a not-yet-specified chip of the new Intel Core Ultra Lunar Lake series. And yes, they fixed the mushy LB and RB buttons. I just hope this time they can actually make better use of the performance that these chips are capable of in theory. I also had a quick first look on the upcoming MSI Prestige 13, which will only weigh 900 gram, being insanely light and powerful at the same time. Also, Acer presented their new Swift 14, which will be sporting the new Intel Core Ultra Lunar Lake series as well, looking really good so far with great build quality and a nice set of connections for a thin and light laptop. And keep in mind that basically any laptop should be able to run at 37 watt, meaning the majority of these laptops should be able to achieve the full performance if equipped with the higher end CPUs. By the way, please be aware that for this part, I'm going to ignore the AI part mostly of the Core Ultra chips as I personally didn't yet find a good use case uh, that I can benchmark in a meaningful and good way. A quick look on the list of upcoming Intel Core Ultra CPUs shows that they now all feature the letter V at the end, just simply to differentiate them but easily from their Meteor Lake predecessors. Here we see that they all will be having four performance and four now much faster cores for a total of 8 cores and, well, 8 threads. While the biggest difference will be the boost clock, the total system RAM, which is now soldered directly on the CPU, meaning it is not upgradable anymore, but that way they can save a lot of energy and use super fast 8533 mega transfer RAM. I know that this is a bummer for some, but keep in mind, these are CPUs for mostly thin and light laptops where every watt counts. The integrated graphics in Lunar Lake is now going by the name Intel Arc 140V for the top models and Intel Arc 130V for the mid-range models. And on average, it's supposed to be 31% faster compared to their predecessor in a pretty wide range of 45 tested games and even 16% faster on average than the new AMD HX370 in the new Ryzen AI 9 while they are trading blows in some of the tested titles. In this example here, we can see the new Intel Core Ultra 9 288V up against the Ryzen AI 9 with its HX370 in F1 2024 on medium to high settings, both at 28W with ray tracing enabled shadows and XDSS and FSR set to performance. And the result is very impressive for an iGPU. The Intel Arc 140V is clearly able to achieve higher FPS and much stable frame times whereas the AMD powered system seems to have real issues here resulting in a lot of stuttering and bad frame times. And here we see Dota 2 on four different systems whereas again Intel is able to outperform the competition's newest CPUs while using less power to do so at the same time. I also had the chance of a one-on-one -on -one interview with Damian Trioli from Intel, asking him some questions about Lunar Lake, especially considering the iGPUs. So hello everyone, today um, I'm sitting here with Damian Trioli from Intel and we're going to talk a bit about the Intel Arc graphics in upcoming mobile CPUs. So hi Damian, thanks for having me. Hi, thank uh, you for joining us here. <laughs> 
Can you tell, just to get my viewers up to speed, can you tell us what you do at Intel and uh, where you came from profession-wise in like two sentences? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm working on a technical marketing for GPU, which involves working with architects early on uh, to uh, following IP development and doing that through the, the product release, uh, performance, features, capabilities, all of these things. Um, I've been working on GPUs uh, for a very long time. Okay. So, so before this, uh, uh, this part of the industry, I was a, a press a reviewer and analyst myself for over okay. 20 years. Okay. Um, so I've been around GPUs for a very long time. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. Okay, so Damien, where do you see Intel Arc iGPUs in five, year, uh, five years? Might they like even replace entry-level dedicated GPUs entirely or almost entirely? Like, is there a roadmap or some kind of goal you want to achieve? Um, I think that's actually almost the case today already, right? Uh, with the uh, performance level we see with built-in GPUs like in Lunar Lake, um, we uh, uh, we are already at a point, I believe, where it doesn't necessarily make sense to have an entry discrete GPUs in the system. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think that we're starting to get there, and you will yeah you will definitely see uh, more of that over yeah. the coming years. Okay. Yeah. Because in, like a few years back, it was like no way that would be possible. Nobody thought about this, that they could replace it, and it's going to be more and more like that, like replacing entry-level uh, yep, GPUs. Yeah, uh, GPUs. Absolutely. Yeah. So is this also going to be the case for like applications like Blender, Premiere Pro, AutoCAD, and SolidWorks? Are they going to be fast enough for people to use these programs with the iGPUs? I I, I think that it will be true for some use cases. Uh, there will still be a need for like a large workstation, right? Sure, for some sure. of these workloads. Uh, but what's interesting is that uh, uh, AI inferencing becoming integral part of these workloads, also changing the performance profiles quite a lot, right? For mm. these workloads. Uh, so having systems uh, uh, with an NPU or more AI capability capabilities in a GPU uh, will also help bring that type of performance and uh, ease of use uh, and, and comfort for, uh, for folks working with these workloads in, in these uh, smaller form factors. Okay, 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 thanks, cool. Um, Damien, for synthetic benchmarks like 3 Mark and Firestrike, the Ultra Core 1, the previous version, the Meteor Light version, was performing very promising, but then they often haven't been able to keep up with these results when it came to actual benchmarks compared to the competition. Why is that in your opinion? Is there any chance that future driver updates will further improve the performance of the um, Ultra Core 1 series and the Ultra Core 2 series? So uh, I think the f first thing I would say is all the performance data that we've presented to you uh, during the, the, the press brief, and Today, you, yes. you will get more material around that, is all of that is in games, yeah. right? And uh, I think there's a reason for that, is we really want to make sure that we focus our engineering work on games, not on benchmarks. Not on benchmarks, yeah. Um, and that starts from uh, uh, ideation within uh, uh, the IP development. Um, this effort that we've started on graphics, discrete GPUs or built-in GPUs, um, includes working closely with developers and that ecosystem uh, and understanding uh, how they use the latest graphics features and APIs mm -hmm. and making sure that we take that into account when we create a new IP. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that is very important into making sure that our IPs, our software can deliver uh, great curve in actual games. Okay. And there's sometimes a little bit of difference between just looking at an API as a spec that you implement and looking at the way developers use that API and optimizing for how developers actually use the API. Okay. So we, 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 we've, we've learned over the past few years and that's definitely an improvement. Okay, on but is, is, is if a Coltra 1 series, is there going to be further driver updates in the future? Oh yes, yeah, we, we will keep supporting Coltra. Okay. Okay. Are, like, I mean, in general, integrated GPUs are usually held back by memory bandwidth because it's smaller than on discrete GPUs, of course. And is there any way to alleviate this or get around it? Like for the new series, did you change anything about how that works? 
for the culture So, uh, I think you are right in general, right? Memory bandwidth is a constraint on built -in for built-in GPUs. Uh, so what we have improved with Coltra, uh, uh 200V series processors. Yes, yeah. um, first, we have faster memory. Uh, and, and then within the IP itself, we made a bunch of improvements. So for example, on GPU side, we have a larger L2 cache. Uh, it's twice larger, so it's helping, right? Reducing the need to go, to go external. Uh, we've also implemented a new type of compression. Uh, so we, we can double uh, compression mm -hmm. uh, okay. on some of the assets. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we've also increased uh, access to some of those compression features, but also some, uh, some steps in the rendering like fast clear that allows to uh, uh, basically tell the GPU that a large chunk of memory should be uh, seen as a bunch of zeros okay. without actually writing zeros there. Uh, so we can do that across more uh, render surfaces and resources for the GPU. So all, all of that helps okay. uh, uh, reduce the need for memory bandwidth. Okay, cool. How fast is the RAM going to be? When it's, it's directly on the chip, right? So it's going to be faster. How fast is it in mega transfers? Uh, the, the memory speed on uh, all Lunar LXQs is yep. going to be 85.33. Okay. So it's, uh, it, it's a very fast LP, LP5X memory that okay. we're using. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay that might sound like a bit of a weird question, but I personally <laughs> always wanted to know, just to get an idea, how many people are usually working on drivers for Intel Mobile Integrated Graphics? Is there a team? Is there a unit? How, how many people are and there? You can't. <laughs> that, that, that's a lot. I, I cannot give you an actual number, but that's, that's a very large team. That's a large team. That's okay. a very, very large team. And, and uh, it's, the, it's the same team in general working on built-in and discrete. Okay, right? that's like the same, the, same the, people. The, the software stack is mm -hmm. the same. The core IP is the same. Uh, so for most of it, it's the same people working on both. Okay, okay, thanks. How is Intel Coltra 2 going to handle VRAM allocation for, for the graphics? Is it like... Will it be possible for every laptop to manually set the VRAM size? Will that happen automatically, or is that up to the laptop manufacturer? So it's actually uh, managed by the OS, uh, and the way Windows is managing that is Windows is allocating about 50% of the system memory uh, for graphics. So it's an up to, right? So uh, it doesn't mean that half of the memory is locked for graphics. Yeah. Uh, it, it means that Windows uh, lets the GPU and the GPU driver allocate up to 50% of the system but memory. We won't be able to set it manually? No, it's OS managed. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll and that, 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 that's the right way to do things, right? Because the, the, the memory is, uh, is shared between all the different components within the system. Um, so it makes sense to let the OS uh, deal with that dynamically. Will there be call to three series CPUs, like replacing Intel i3s in the future, or is it only replacing, going to replace Intel Core i5s and i7s and i9s? So what we've announced today is uh, the Core Ultra 200 V series, and, 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 and this family of, of, uh, of CPUs is focused on uh, Ultra 9, 7, and 5. Um, you will probably learn a little bit more about what's coming for the rest of the stack tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and we will announce these products progressively as... Uh, so for as more mobile CPUs tomorrow? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, your personal opinion on graphic drivers, because when I'm testing laptops and testing the graphics, people, some people always, always say, use the newest WHQL drivers and not the laptop manufacturer drivers. Which one would you prefer to use to test the optimal performance of a laptop? So I, I believe that in general, uh, to, uh, whether it's to test the actual performance of the laptop or just to play games, for example, on a laptop, uh, using the latest uh, WHQL driver is the way to go. That's where you have the best experience, the best performance, the latest features. Um, so we can ignore the warning that you should probably not use those drivers if the manufacturer gave you drivers with the laptop? So uh, I think for reviews, you should definitely use the WHQL driver. Okay. Uh, and, and we're also working, by the way, with uh, all the OEMs so they can uh, uh, distribute that latest driver uh, as fast as possible, right? I know that sometimes they have some specific customization that is built into the drivers they distribute. Uh, so they, they, they may be a little bit of a trade-off uh, when it comes to actual use case of the, the machine. 
Uh, but when it comes to performance evaluation, uh, I think using the latest driver okay. from, from Intel is the okay. way to go. Okay. That's good advice. Thanks. And uh, last but not least, Damien, what's the last PC game you've played? Oh, interesting. So, you know, I'm, I'm from Europe, I'm from Belgium, and uh, yeah. I moved to the US a few years ago. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm still playing uh, a lot uh, FC24. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to convince my colleagues in the labs to uh, uh, use that game okay. a little bit more as well. So yeah, that's the last game I played before. Okay, so, so soccer. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Because they don't, they don't play FC24 in the US? <laughs> Not a lot. Not a lot. Not okay. a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Damien, thanks for your time. That's all. Yeah, sure. Okay. Was a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. I also want to mention that according to their staff, Intel is working closely together with the Blender team to implement their iGPU's capabilities in the best possible way into this 3D rendering software. That way they managed to improve render times with cycles by around 100% over the last generation. Also they've shown impressive playback and editing capabilities of 8K footage with real-time preview with AI in Premiere Pro thanks to the use of its GPU capabilities compared to encoding this 8K footage via the CPU. So I'm really looking forward to get a review unit with one of these chips very soon to thoroughly test like games, benchmarks and applications myself firsthand. Tomorrow I'll also be attending uh, the Arrow Lake architecture briefing, but infos on that will be under embargo for quite a, another while. I will also attend an Acer, a Asus and probably a Samsung presentation, so I might have some more info on upcoming laptops for you very soon. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.